take a few questions from the assessment which was held. Let me take a few questions from the assessment which was held on Monday because uh, some of them were not answered by anyone and they required a bit of indulgence. So let me explain how we could go about those questions. There was one question in the assessment which said that cars and lorries uh, go on a track and when they go on steep hills they can sometimes go out of control so that's why there are certain kind of escape tracks which are tracks filled with sand in which if the car goes with the speed of 100 miles 100 kilometers per hour then it will uh, its speed reduces to 100 into 3 raised, 3 raised to minus t 100 into 3 raised to minus t minus 1 kilometer per hour after t seconds. So when it goes into the sand filled track, after t seconds of being in the sand filled track, its speed becomes 100 into 3 raised to minus t minus 1 kilometer per hour. Now the, now the question said that we have to determine the time taken to stop the vehicle. So the, it was nothing much to go about it. You have to just equate this to 0 and then find t from this. And another extra information had been given in the question. The sunlight is reflecting the board, so I can't see the chalk. Okay, just a minute. Now? Yeah, now I can see better. Okay. Now for this question, another extra information was given that 3 is to 1.19 is equal to 1 by 0 0.27. This will prove handy in further when we go about this problem. So 100 into 3 raised to minus t minus 1 is equal to 0. We will bring the 1 to the other side. We will get 100 into 3 raised to minus t is equal to 1. And that 3, 3 now 100 into 3 raised to minus t as we know will be 100 into 1 divided by 3 raised to t. It can be said 100 by 3 raised to t is equal to 1. 3 raised to t can be multiplied to the other side, which will get us 100 is equal to 3 raised to t. Now, we don't know how we would go about this because 100 is not a perfect exponent of 3. But we have one information given. That is 3 raised to 1.19 is equal to 1 by 0 0.27. 1 by 0 0.27 simplified is 100 by 27. Now, 27 we can see gives us something significant as 27 nothing but 3 raised to 3. Now, 3 raised to 1.19 is equal to 100 divided by 3 raised to 3. Hi, everyone. Fine, all. Am I audible? I didn't get it. Can you repeat? See, the question was determine what, how much time will it take to stop the vehicle. Yeah. Right. Now, now when a car is car with a speed of 100 kilometers per hour is going in that track, it is given that after t seconds of being in that track, its speed becomes 100 into 3 raised to minus t minus 1 kilometer per hour. Okay. To stop the vehicle means we have to equate this to 0. And further when we solve this equation, we can bring 1 to this side. We'll get 100 into 3 raised to minus t is 1. And then, you know, 3 raised to minus t is 1 by 3 raised to t. So, 100 by 3 raised to t is 1. You can multiply 3 raised to t to each side. You'll get 100 is equal to 3 raised to t. Okay. Now, got it? Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't get the second part, like 3 raised to about 1.19, that part. Ah, that's the... Uh, 3 raised, now, you know, 100 is not a perfect exponent of 3. We'll get... 3, 3 raised to 1 is 3, 3 raised to 2 is 9, 3 raised to 3 is 27, fourth power is 81, fifth power is 243 straight up. But yeah. 100 is not exactly an exponent of 3, but we have this information. 3 raised to 1.19 is 1 by 0 0.27. Okay. Now, you know dividing decimals, right? Yeah. So dividing decimals means that if you want to reduce, if you want to make the denominator a natural number, you have to multiply the numerator by 2. Why? Because it is 0 0.27. When I only, only when I move two places, I will get 27, which is a natural number, right? Yeah. And the numerator has to compensate for that. Because if I say 
1 by 0 0.27 is 1 by 2 27 that is not possible that is not mathematics yeah so the numerator is to compensate and also multiply by 10 raised to 2 so the, in a way what i was hinting to in this fact was 3 raised to 1.19 is 100 by 27 okay we know this fact that 27 is 3 raised to 3 yes now if I multiply 3 raised to 3 to the left hand side of the equation, you know when you multiply same base, different exponents, you will add the exponents? Yeah. So you get 3 raised to 1.19 plus 3. 3 raised to 1.19 plus 3. Because you are multiplying 3 raised to 3. Yeah. Okay, let me make it visible. So give me some. Okay. So I told you that this will be 3 raised to 1.19 is 100 by 27, right? And 27 is 3 raised to 3, right? Yeah. Now I can multiply 3 raised to 3 to each side, right? Or I can bring 3 raised to 3 here and equate this to 100. Okay. Getting me? Yeah. See, I want to make this equation so that I get 3 in raised to some power as a term of 100. So, if I multiply 3 raised to 3 on each side, I'm cancelling the denominator on the uh, right hand side. Yeah. But I also have to multiply 3 raised to 3 to the left hand side, correct? Yeah. So, that's what I've done. 3 raised to 1.19 into 3 raised to 3 is 100. Okay. Now you know by the law, first law of exponents, right, that you can add 1.19 and 3, you get 3 raised to 4.19 is 100. Okay. So 100 is equal to 3 raised to t and 100 is equal to, and we also got from here that 3 raised to 4.19 is 100. So I can replace t with 4.19. See, or I can simply go over here. 100 I can say is 3 raised to 4.19 and I told you that if you can see 3 raised to 4.19 is equal to 3 raised to t or any number then you can remove this 3 part and say that 4.19 should be equal to t. I told you right? Yes. Yes. So t is equal to 4.19 so that gives us the answer that after approximately 4.19 seconds of getting into that sand filled track the car will come to a halt. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, okay. Shaktam. Good afternoon, Shriyansh. Uh, Shaktam, due to a network issue, I joined late. So, can you tell what are we doing? Uh, before moving on to the next concept, we were discussing a few problems in the assessment which I didn't see your answers for. This one was the one, the cars and lorries one, in which when a car comes into the sand filled track, it gets, a, if it's moving with 100 km per hour speed, its speed reduces to 3 raised to minus t, 100 into 3 raised to minus t minus 1 second. And we were told to get to know in what time will the car get stopped. Yeah, I had it out in the question, but now it's clear. I got it. Okay. Another question I saw. Shriptam, it will be hours, right? Not seconds. It will be hours. No, sir. It says that if his car is going into speed with 100 km per hour, after t seconds of getting, it will become 100 into 3 raised to minus t minus 1 kilometer per hour. That is a rule for these sample tracks. After t seconds. Okay. Okay, okay. So, another question was, find the equation whose roots are a by b and b by a. If a square is 5a minus 3 and b square is 5b minus 3. This was also to some extent simple. What you can do is easily bring this term to the other side. You get a square minus 5a plus 3 is equal to 0 and b square minus 5b plus 3 is equal to 0. 
Now I have told that if I have a standard quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c is equal to zero, whose roots are alpha and beta, what mathematically that means is if I put a alpha square plus b alpha plus c, or even if I put a beta square plus b beta plus c, that give me zero. It means x is satisfied by alpha and beta. You put either alpha and beta, the equation is satisfied. Similarly. By going by the reverse method, you can see that these two equations can give us something that x square minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0 is an equation whose roots are a and b. Getting it? Because I'm just going in the reverse process. We had first that ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and the roots are alpha and beta. Then you put a alpha square plus b alpha plus c is equal to 0, a beta square plus b beta plus c is equal to 0. In this, I know I'm taking a square minus 5a plus 3 is equal to 0 and b square minus 5b plus 3 is equal to 0. And I'm just saying that they can be the roots of x square minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. And from here, as I had told you, if the roots are alpha and beta, you will get something like x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta. You will get in that form. That means from here, you can deduce that a plus b in our case will be 5 and a into b will be 3. Got it? Why everyone? Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, do you get it? Yes. Okay. Now the question is determine the equation whose roots are a by b and b by a. Now, the roots of that equation are a by b and b by a. So, I have told you that x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta is equal to 0 is a way of representing the quadratic equation if its roots are alpha and beta. Now, in this case, the roots are a by b and b by a. That means x square minus a by b plus b by a x. Now, a by b into b by a, b b gone, a gone, we'll get 1. So, x square minus a by b plus b by a x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, x, now let me see how I can use what we had got that a plus b should be equal to 5 and a b is equal to 3 to find out a value for a by b plus b by a. So, a by b plus b by a will be a square plus b square by a b. Right? Right? Right, everyone? Yes. Now, I told you that a plus b the whole square is a square plus b square minus 2ab because here we don't know exactly what are the values of a and b. But we know that a plus b the whole square is a square plus b square minus 2a. So what I can say is that this will be a plus b the whole square minus 2ab. Any comments, anyone? Because a plus b the whole square we know is a square plus b square minus plus 2ab. If I remove 2ab from that, I'm getting the same a square plus b square. Right? Fine with all, getting it, Shreyansh, Shreyansh, Ajinkya. Oh, uh, yes. Everyone? Okay. And a by b, we, a into b we know is 3 from what we had got last time. a plus b we know is 5. So, 5 square is 25. a b is 3. So, 25 minus 2 into 3 by 3, which will be 25 minus 6, 19 by 3. Now, we got a value for a by b plus b by a. That means the equation with the root a by b and b by a will be x square minus 19 by 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. But we are not done yet. 19 by 3x is not exactly something which is satisfying because we will be a bit taxing when we want to find the exact roots. 19 by 3 we will have to put in the denominator and then minus b plus or minus b square. By the quadratic formula it will be a bit taxing. So what we do to Reduce our efforts. Simple. Multiply 3 to each term. 
x square will become 3x square. Minus 19 by 3x will become minus 19x. Plus 1 will become plus 3. 0 into 3 will remain 0. So this is our final equation. Which will have the roots a by b and b by n. 3x square minus 19x plus 3 is equal to 0. Fine? Ryansh, Ryansh. Ajwal, fine? Yes. Okay. Now, one more question, which was the fine marker, was regarding the midpoints of a triangle. Find the area of a triangle form by joining the midpoints of the side of the triangle whose vertices are so let me draw the triangle first. Just assuming it to be like this. What is it? A 0, comma, minus 1, 2, comma, 1, and 0, comma, 3. Midpoint formula I taught everyone. So it would be 0 plus 2. So the coordinates of the midpoint, let's say the midpoints are here, here, and here. So coordinates of midpoint, x coordinates will be 0 plus 2 by 2, which would be 2 by 2, which would be 1. Minus 1 plus 1 by 2, that would be 0. So I'm write 2 comma 1 and 0 comma 3. 2 plus 0, 2. 2 divided by 2 will be 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 divided by 3, 4 divided by 2 will be 2. Finally, 0 plus 0, 0. And 0 by 2 is 0. Minus 1 plus 3 will be 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now, what the question says is that find the area of a triangle form by joining the midpoints of the sides of the triangle. So, now they are asking me to join the midpoints and then find the area. We can do so by distance formula. But first, let us see the sides of the triangle. 1, 0 and 1, 2. Let us find what will be the lengths of the side. 1 comma 0, 1 comma 2. So distance formula says 1 minus 1 whole square 0 plus 2 minus 0 whole square 2. Okay. 2 and uh, 2 square under the root will be 2. Because you are finding magnitude 1. That cannot be a negative value. So the length and is also length in fact. Length can obviously not be negative. So this will be 2. Now 1 comma 2 and 0 comma 1. 0 minus 1 whole square will be will be 1, 1 and 1 minus 2 whole square will also be 1. So 1 plus 1 under the root, root so root 2 will be the second side. Third side, one, 0 minus 1 is, uh, one, 0 minus 1 is whole square is 1 and again zero min 1 minus 0 is 1 because it doesn't matter if we know the values in which order we are taking. Even if it's negative, we are eventually squaring it. So 1 minus 0 and 0 minus 1 over square. So 1 plus 1 under the root. Root. Okay. Now we can see that this is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle by which what I mean? Two sides are equal. So what I can do in this case is I can drop a perpendicular from here. I will determine the value of the perpendicular. I can do so by Pythagoras theorem. Root 2 is the hypotenuse and 2 is this, okay. So we know that if we have a isosceles triangle and from the vertex, we drop a perpendicular onto the base. See, these two are the equal sides. Base is the only unequal side. side. So if we drop a perpendicular from the vertex here, we can also see that it will cut that base in two parts, two equal parts, which means the whole length was 2, so this would be 1 and this would be 1. Now, we can deduce by Pythagoras theorem that the length of this will be 1. And then we can say by uh, how to find the area of a triangle is half into base into height. Base, okay, so let me take these two triangles. These two triangles, uh, they are congruent since 1 root 2, 1, 1 root 2, 1, sides are same. So, 2 into half of 1 is the base and 1 is the height. So, 2 into half into 1 into 1, this is 1. 
And then the area of the whole triangle also you can deduce by mm. zero. Okay, fine. I'll find that zero minus two four and minus one minus one that would be uh, again four. So two root two for this side. Two comma one zero comma three. This will also be two root two and zero zero minus one three. So this would be four. 2 root 2, 2 root 2, 4. As a series again, I can drop a perpendicular here that would make it 2 and 2. So the area of the first one we got as 1, the small triangle. And if we do this, then we get the area as 2 into half into. So the length of the perpendicular, okay, how to find that? 2, hypotenuse is 2 root 2. So, 2 root 2 whole square is uh, 8. That this would also be 2. This would also be 2 because root 2 is the Pythagoras number as they call it. So, 2 half into 2 into 2. Finally, 2 into 1. This should give me 4. That means 1 is the area of this and 4 is the area of this. You were told to find the ratio of the area of the small triangle to the area of the big triangle. So, that would be 1 is to 4. Got it, everybody? Fine with all? Yes, sure. Okay. Now, that was it with the assessment. It was a culmination of that first unit. Now, we'll be starting a new concept. And that new concept is will be proving very handy. Because that will almost pop up in each and every chapter you learn in physics. You can put an exception to waves and thermodynamics. What I'm naming is trigonometry. Okay. Trigonometry is what we'll be starting with today. Now, um, Atreya, are you there? Yes. Uh, do we know about angles? Angles, acute angles, obtuse angles, do you know about them? Yes. Mm. Matreo, do you know about them? Just a minute, I think. Yeah? Mm. Okay, fine. I think, yeah, um, let me ask you. What is this angle known as? Oh, sorry, acute angle. Okay, acute angle, good. This right angle. angle. Okay, that's not right angle. Okay, that looks like a right angle a little bit. Let me make it a bit more clear. Ah, this. This angle. Take this as one. What do you call angle two? Ajinkya, you are on mute. Obtuse angle. Obtuse, okay. What do you call... Angle number three. You know what it's called? You're on mute again. I think I'm audible. Mm. Okay, fine. If you don't know, this is called reflex angle. It's more than 180. But less than 360. 360. And finally, the most important angle for this chapter. What do you call this? Right angle. Right angle. Now, Ryan, are you there? Ryan. Okay, not me, he's there. Oh, Ryan. Ryan, can you hear me? Okay, Shreyansh, are you there? Yes, I'm there. No, I'm audible. Okay, yeah, Shreyansh, now you're audible. Okay. Yeah. Do you, are you privy to triangles? What triangles mm -hmm. are? Triangles. They are three-sided poly. 
three sided polygons yeah three sided polygons yeah and there are various type for example if all the angles are acute they are called acute angle triangles if one angle is obtuse they are called obtuse angle triangles angles do not be reflex now there is one property do you know one property about the angles of a triangle some difference product anything no sir shyansh do you know oh uh, yes or oh, the sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degree yes okay so the sum of you take any triangle you form any triangle with any length any anything the sum of its angles this angle this angle and this angle will always be 180 degrees okay 180 degrees now this was based on angles based on sides all based on the properties of the sides also we uh, we try to differentiate between triangles for example if we have a triangle in which all three sides are equal it's called equilateral if i have a triangle in which only two sides are equal which we were taking in that question regarding the midpoint that's called an isosceles triangle and if no side is equal they are all completely different that is called a scalene triangle in trigonometry in the concept of trigonometry what we will be dealing most is with right angle triangles right angle triangles those are those kind of triangles whose one angle is equal to 90 degree now can i man tell me if okay uh, rayan shayu there Okay, not Rayan. Shaya, sorry, Rayan. Ajinkya. Yes. Okay. Say, let this be alpha. Let this angle be alpha. Let this angle be theta. Now, Shreyan said that the sum of all the angles should be one eighty degrees. Correct. Okay. If I know that this angle is ninety degrees, everyone, please hold your answers. because it may seem like a sissy question to some people what can you think will be the sum of alpha and theta okay let me mathematically ek with the help of you okay uh, theta no no they are told your answer let me uh, mathematically uh, <laughs> explain what what was what was triangle meaning at that time we have such a triangle and according to his rule which he said is right which which was right and not as the excursion of your rule triangle don't worry alpha plus theta plus 90 degrees is 180 now ajinkya what can you tell me will be alpha plus theta can i answer Obtuse? No, 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 not in nature. Alpha plus theta plus ninety degrees, one eighty degree. So what will be only alpha plus theta? One ninety. Ninety. All of you break broke my rule, but see, sorry. Alpha plus theta is ninety degree. See, we are bringing ninety to the other side, or simply yes. what we are doing is reducing. 90 from each side, so we'll get alpha plus theta is 180 minus 90. That will get us alpha plus theta is equal to 90 degree. Fine, I think. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Alpha plus theta is 90 degree. Now, in fact, let me tell you one more thing, which you'll find a bit confusing, but I'll have to go a bit astray just for five minutes to explain the topic, which I will. I can also say that alpha plus theta plus 90 degree. Is equal to pi. This is a Greek letter which we call pi. Now you all are the perplexed. You had learned in some of your grades that pi is a constant irrational number and not something which you can put in degrees. Pi is a constant irrational number, 
which is approximately 22 by 7 in value. But now I am telling that the sum of angles is pi. Now, this may leave you a bit perplexed, but let me explain how this is possible. Shyam, Shani, doubt, you're raising your hand. No, not a doubt. Okay. Uh, I will, I, can I tell something? Uh, yeah. About this, uh, we will convert degrees into radians. Okay, I, I was going to that, but let me explain because they may also not know about radians. So, let me explain why I said pi over here. Let me take a circle. I'm going a bit in straight. Let me take a circle. Now, you know that if this is a center, any line drawn from center is of the same length, which is its radius, which we call the radius of the circle. Say I take the radius as r. And let me take the angle between two radii, which I have drawn over here. As theta. Is that circle visible? Yes, clearly. Okay, I think there's a bit of light. Let me remove that. Okay. Now, you know that if this is R, since it's drawn from the center, this will also be R. But this, now let me use another chalk to explain. This length a part of the perimeter or circumference enclosed by these two radii is referred to as an arc. And the length of this arc is r into theta. But again, it doesn't make any sense at all. Why? How can I multiply length and degree to get length? It's not possible. Mathematically, dimensionally, un in terms of units, it's not possible. But theta, what I do in this case is convert it to something called radians, which Shriyant was hinting on earlier. And to represent theta radian, I put a small c kind of structure over theta. This will be the length. Now, radians, now let me make a correlation. Suppose... I take another circle, just some alterations, and let this be the center. This length is r, this length is r, this whole angle is 180 degrees. Now, you know that since they are all on the same line to the center, we know that this is a diameter. Diameter and is also a line which cut the circle into half, pardon me for my drawing, but Diameter is a line which cuts the circle into two parts, two equal parts. And we know the circumference of the whole circle, which means from this, this whole length, this, if I move along the boundary, I have moved a distance of 2 pi r. Now, half of this would be pi r. And we know that from the previous example that it would be r into theta. In this case, theta is 180 degree. I'll written here pi because pi is nothing else but 180 degree in radian form. And that should be the case because if we say that the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, in a circle, we are moving at an, uh, a 360 degree angle. 360 is 2 into 180 degrees. So 2 pi r. Got it, How I can say that 180 degrees pi, but except only in radian form. Fine. Fine. Anyone? Any doubts? Okay. Is my connection disrupted or what? Hello. Yes. I'm audible. Yes. Why aren't you guys replying? Okay. Alpha plus theta plus 90 degrees, 180 degree. Alpha plus theta is 90 degree we got from here. Let me get back to my first while chalk. Now, let's say this triangle was A, B, C. What we say is A, C is the longest side of the triangle. And there's a theorem called the Pythagoras theorem. 
which is applicable for any right angle triangle. We say that if there's a right angle triangle ABC, if AC being its longest side, now, by the way, AC is the longest side of the right angle triangle. It is also referred to as the Shreyansh, dash of the triangle, longest side of the right angle triangle. Name, name, name. Uh, pardon me, can you repeat? Dash is the longest side of the right angle triangle. The hypotenuse? Exactly, hypotenuse. This is called the hypotenuse. H Y P O T E N U S E. I'm not here for teaching English or spelling. I'm here to teach mathematics. I was. Now, that is called the hypotenuse. Pythagoras said that if I have a right angle triangle ABC, where AC is the longest side, AB in length. AB length whole square plus BC length whole square is equal to AC length whole square. Now BC we also refer to as base. B-A-S-E. So this is base. This is hypotenuse. And this side is called the perpendicular. And a fact is that the perpendicular, the vertical line, the vertical line is the shortest side of the right angle triangle. Base is in the middle. Okay. So that was for saying what exactly is the Pythagoras theorem. Now we have something called trigonometric ratios or trigonometric identities. Let me take the angle theta. I say S I N E or sine of the angle theta is sine of the angle theta is perpendicular by the sine of okay, well, just a minute, let me explain. It's not only of theta. See. Perpendicular of any angle per se means, let me explain. I have, for example, let me take the angle CAB or alpha as we have taken. I made it with CA and AB. CA and AB, when they met at a common point, gave birth to alpha. BC was nowhere in the picture. That side, which is nowhere in the picture, when I make an angle, is called perpendicular only of an angle. Perpendicular of an angle. Okay. Now, sine of any angle, S-I-N-E, of any angle, okay, any angle, generally I am taking theta, not the theta and R case. Sine of any angle theta is perpendicular by Hypotenuse. Oh, Shaktam? Yeah, yes, yes. Can we also say opposite upon hypotenuse? Yeah, we can also say opposite upon hypotenuse. Yes. We also call it the opposite, yes. Correct. More uh, to make it more understandable and not allow confusion, we can also call it opposite. Okay. Next, we have cosine. Cosine of any angle theta is base by hypotenuse. Base, base means base. Now, let me take ACB or in our case, our theta, not the general. Base means this sleeping line, which is not looking to be on an incline. So, I made this. This horizontal line is called the base. Well, but it's kind of relative because if I take CAB, which is alpha, this one is obvious. So basically the one which somewhat doesn't seem to be on an incline. But then you'll be confused. But then if, if I take ABC or the 90 degree angle, both don't seem to be on an incline. Then I will say that, hmm, how should I take this down? We cannot assign a base to a 90 degree angle. In other words, we say that 
cosine of 90 degree in the base part in the numerator part we'll have to put zero okay we can't assign a cosine to a right angle but cosine of any normal angle generally is base by hypotenuse the further trigonometric ratios or identities are based on these we say tangent of theta will be sine of theta by cos of theta so sine of theta by cos of theta will be opposite by hypotenuse into hypotenuse by base see because i'm divide opposite by hypotenuse into hypotenuse by base i'll get opposite by base tangent that was for tangent then we have cotangent cotangent is just the reciprocal of tangent that would be base by opposite and then we have um we have okay so what i was saying is carrying all this sine of theta cosine of theta tangent of theta becomes a little bit overbearing for a person so we have short form of this so sine of theta is also represented by sin theta then we have cosine co cos cos theta tan theta for tangent of theta cotangent of theta to its merit has got theta now two trigonometric ratio which i did not mention was sec theta spelling s e c theta and cosec theta or c s c theta Sometimes people like to say the whole spelling C O S E C O S E C theta, but C S C theta is also fine. Is it said? Sec theta is nothing but reciprocal of cos theta, which is one by cos theta. Cosec theta is nothing but one by sine theta, and cot theta was one by tan theta. Okay. Now let me tell you about some. in a way a pattern okay now from what we learned mm, for then we come to ryansh ryansh are you there ryansh unmute ryansh are you there okay pradwal Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, based on whatever I told, mm -hmm. what would be sine of the theta in our case? I was saying theta is general before. General way to represent any angle, but this theta ACB would be what in our case? Sine of any angle theta. What I say? Opposite by hypotenuse. Yes. Opposite in this case would be what? AC. ANC. AC by. Uh... No, 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 no,
hypotenuses remain unchanged opposite of this angle so uh, two lines we can make this angle which one is not concerned with what they are uh, i don't know this is easy no no that's not answer these two sides made the angle okay which one is not concerned with them even if this horizontal sleeping one uh is it a uh, a b c yes good b c and cos of alpha cos of alpha will be the base now base of alpha c i took this angle okay now you can your head and see which one is sleeping in the case of alpha uh a a b very good this will be a b by a c now look at pattern is it cos alpha equal to sin of theta uh yeah okay and didn't i also say that theta plus alpha is 90 degree and that thus is it theta 90 degree minus alpha okay similarly can't you also see that sin of alpha is equal to cos of theta bc by ac bc by ac yeah okay now replace theta with 90 minus alpha what do you okay. get is this or do the other way around it won't change anything replace alpha with 90 minus theta mm. now sin of theta is equal to cos of alpha and cos of alpha i can say is cos of 90 minus theta okay cos of theta is sin of 90 degree minus theta very important one of the first important equations in this okay Okay, there is one um, mnemonic which you can remember to keep what is what are what is sine theta, what is cos theta easily. Let me tell you what that is. Some people, some people have curly black hair, thickly plastered back. What do I mean by this? Why am I talking about people who have black hair? Some people have curly black hair, tightly. You can also say pulled, pulled back. Now, opposite is something we use, but actually we normally use perpendicular. What I am actually hinting on is sine theta s. Is p perpendicular divided by hypotenuse? Cos theta is base by hypotenuse. Tan theta is perpendicular by base. Some people have curly black hair, tightly pulled back. Okay, this is the way you can remember what is sine theta, what is cos theta, what is tan theta. Okay. Okay. Now we have a certain table. a table which has to be instilled in the memory in fact even the examinations for example je and neet they'll have one page before the exam they'll or they'll give it in the question the values of certain constants but in this case they are not going to do that this will have to be instilled in your memory okay so let me draw a 4 by Something table. This table should be literally just there in your memory. Okay, so what I'm keeping as trigonometric ratios, and 
on trigonometry relations on this side, angles, certain angles on this side. Sine of the angle, cos of the angle, and tan of the angle. The angle which will concern ourselves was 0 degree, 15 degree, 30 degree, some cases 37 degree. Um, then we have which one? Okay, I shall down. Wait, I'll have to make some more space. Okay. Oh, not 15 degree. Yeah, sorry. Just a minute, just a minute. Me. Okay, so 0 degree, 30 degree, 37 degree, uh, 45 degree. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. 43 degree, 40. Wait, just a minute, just a minute. Sorry, I'm tired. Okay. 0 degree, 30 degree, 37 degree, then we have 45 degree, then we have 53 degree, then we have 60 degree, and then we have finally 90. Okay, so what you want to do is discuss the values. Sign of, now this is a, you, you can prove this, I'm not saying you cannot prove this, but still, will take a lot of time so i'm just telling you the values right now you should keep it in your memory because this table is a very important okay sine of zero is zero cos of zero is one tan is sine by cos so that is also zero sine of 30 is one by two cos of 30 is root three by two Tan of 30 is 1 by root 3. 37 degree, as you can see, is not a, uh, an exact multiple of 3, 3 or 15 degree. But still, uh, those sometimes are asked in the questions. So, thanks. so sine 37 is um, 3 by 5. Cos 37 is 4 by 5. Tan 37 is 3 by 4. Sine of 45 is 1 by root 2. Shaktam, there is a blurriness in your screen. Wait just a minute. Blurriness in my screen. Now fine. Or is it internet? Yes, now fine. Now fine. Now. Okay. Cos of 45 is also 1 by root 2. Tan of 45 is 1. Sine of 53 is 4 by 5. Cos of 53 is 3 by 5. Tan of 53 is 4 by 3. Yes, okay. Ah, okay. Then um, sine of 60 is root 3 by 2. Cos of 60 is 1 by 2. Tan of 60 is root 3. Sine of 90 is 1, cos of 90 is 0, tan of 90 is undefined. Because it's 1 by 0, 1 by 0 is undefined. Just don't argue over that and say no, it's 0, no, it's infinity. Just leave it as undefined. So note down this table. And it's very important to instill this in your memory. I'm giving you uh, two minutes to And there are some ratios which you should remember. They uh, means make a lot of uh, Pythagoras theorem ratios. Some we call them, for example, three four five triangle. Three four five means three square plus four square is five square. Similarly, there are many others. There are like um, there's three four five. There is um, as far as I remember, there was a five twelve thirteen. 
there was an 8, 15, 17. And the uh, size which are the ratios of these three means, uh, for example, if even if I take 10, 24, 26, the ratio is just 5, 12, 13. And uh, yeah, that way you can, these three ratios are the ones on which they mostly base all their, um, this thing, all their, all the triangles which they use in the questions. This is what they mostly do. Okay, just um, after you're done, is everyone done with this? I still need some time to know. No, done. Done. Okay. Now there's two more talk. Uh, just two small topics actually. In trigonometry, when we are representing um, some powers of certain trigonometric ratios, it's it becomes we means if I want to know what is sine theta whole square. I write it as sine square theta. See, now don't you also say, Acha, it is sine whole square into theta. No, this is just a way to make our job easier because sine theta the whole square and if you want to add or theta the whole square, that becomes a bit too much too taxing to handle. So we just say it as if I want to raise sine theta to n power or cos theta to n power, sine n theta. And now, don't put n in the same line as there. Then we have something called angles of elevation and depression. Now, let me take one kilo here. Who wants to volunteer? Give your name. The first person who says, Okay, write your names in the chat box. The first person whose name I get, I'll put the name of the person as that person. Uh, the chat box isn't available. Oh, okay, okay. sorry, sorry. Let me switch on. Okay, it's switched on. First person to write your name. Shriyansh, okay. Shriyansh is fastest. So let me take Shriyansh on a journey to my boat. Okay, let me raise this table and make some space. Okay. Chance imagine a world, a non covid world, and come in a two dimensional form on my board. Okay. Now let me say there's a building over there. And um, second person who wrote her name was Atreo. Okay, let me put Atreo on the top of this tag. If Shreyansh wants to see Atreo, the angle at which he'll have to put his head up, let's say it's theta. So that angle of this is angle of elevation. And let me say that this is a means he was standing this many meters away from the uh, tower on which on the top of which Atreo, uh, Atreo the playful child, he wants to jump from there, but Shreyansh wants to rescue him. So he is looking at Atreo uh, and he is wanting uh, to know the exact angle and want to calculate at uh, what speed should he go to save him from falling. So um, he sees that an angle theta and that is angle of um, means. Uh, okay, just, just a minute. This was a bit inaccurate. Let me put, let's say this is the ground of length B. This is a tower of height H. Let me put Shreyan should be thrust his head a bit below the ground. So the angle which he with which he'll have to see Atreo, that is theta. And this whole thing as you can see, and uh, H by B is tan theta. Okay. Now that is about angle of elevation. Angle of depression is also something. So let me explain what will angle of elevation and angle of depression means uh, what will be 
the case and angle of depression. Mm, okay, fine. Now let me say that, um, how should I say? Okay, fine. That was theta. And now let me say, so Shreyansh was seeing a trio at this place. Now if I draw one line over here, let me say of this much length only as it is of the, the ground or under which I thrusted Shreyansh, this angle is the angle of depression. And as you can see by parallel lines, alternate interior angles and parallel lines, if this is theta, this also will be theta. And tan theta will be h by b in this case also. So this case is angle of depression where I have to peer my head down. Angle of elevation is where I elevate my head up. Fine, everyone? Fine with all? Yes. Okay, or let me take another example which does not involve both of you to come. Okay. Let's say... I am on a flat few ground. But this time I am bringing up. Uh, let me say, don't take tan theta and all in this case because this is somewhat not straight. Let me say I am looking at an aeroplane. Aeroplane is here. That is angle of elevation. And uh, this is my horse. Yeah, I mean, this definitely doesn't look like a horse but that is my horse. This will be 90 minus theta, but don't take that much into account. Just say that this is angle of depression. Okay, now that was about Shriyan Chatreo, me, the aeroplane, and my horse. So, sine theta, I told you, is perpendicular by base usually. Now, sine square theta will be perpendicular by, by base of whole square, which will be p. And if I take perpendicular as P, base as B, that will be P square by B square. Similarly, cos square theta will be, um, oh sorry, sorry, P square by X square, X square, sorry. Pardon. That would have been tan square theta would have been P square by B square. But sin square theta will be P square by X square. Similarly, cos square theta will be B square by X square. Now, when I add them, so I told you that if this is a right angle triangle, this is called perpendicular and we as P, base and hypotenuse. Now, sine squared, let me add both of these and see what happens. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Now you know, all, all of you know how to add fractions. Hypotenuse square, H square will be down. I have P square plus B square by H square. I told you about the Pythagoras theorem in the beginning. Now, Ajinkya, are you there? Ajinkya? Okay, uh, Riyansh, are you there? Fine, Riyansh. Riyansh, at least you can, can you hear me? Yes, Shaktam. Okay. Now, I, I told everyone about the Pythagoras theorem in the beginning. Can you tell me a replacement for P square plus B square? Hint, Pythagoras theorem. P square plus B square? Huh. So, we, we are taking A, B, C and where A, B square plus B, C square, A, C square. Now, just take the left as P here, this as B, this as H. Now in this triangle, the one which I am pointing my finger to here, P square plus B square will be what? According to Pythagoras theorem. Mm, I don't have any idea about this. Okay, let, me, let me make it a bit simpler. If this were ABC, you know according to Pythagoras theorem that will be AB square plus BC square is equal to AC square, right? Yes. Where A, B, B, C and A, C are the lengths of these parts. Yes. Now, 
take the length of ab as p p p for pineapple take the length of bc as uh, b b for banana as you can see i'm hungry for fruits and take ac as h h for okay i'm not getting any fruit just take halwa okay so replace ab bc and ac with pb and h respectively and tell me what your what relation you're getting for what are you getting for p square plus b square it will be equal to h square exactly and we are not your sin square theta plus cos square theta is p square plus b square by h square p square plus b square as i d did say charge will be h square h square by h square will be 1 so this is a general sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1 this is also one of the most important trigonometric equations because based on this only based on only this will we have a few more equations i'll just introduce the equations to all of you now now all of you remember when i was proving quadratic formula where for example i was when i was multiplying say 4a to each or to the equation i was meaning that multiply to each term and when i was dividing i meant dividing by each term now mm, pratwal are you there yeah okay very good now let me see let me divide each term of sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 let me divide that by cos square theta or make it simple sin square theta divide each and every term by sin square theta means what i mean is sin square theta by sin square theta plus cos square theta by cos sin uh, square theta plus 1 by sin square theta So yeah, I'll make your job easy. Sine square theta by sine square theta will obviously be one, correct? Okay. Cos square theta by sine square theta. What I mean by this is cos theta by sine theta all square. Now, cos theta by sine theta is what? I told you, right? There is cos theta, cos theta, and tan theta. Which one's value is also equal to cos theta by sine theta? Okay. Which one? Which one? I'm asking. Uh, I don't know. Just flip your pages. Flip your pages. And see. Cos theta by sine theta is equal to another trigonometric ratio of theta. What was that? Uh, I don't know. It was cos theta, right? Yeah. Okay. So cos square theta by sine square theta will be cot square theta. Okay. So you one by sine square theta. One by sine yes. square theta will be one by sine theta the whole square. Okay. One by sine theta, as we know, is cosec theta, and cosec theta the whole square will be cosec square theta. Mm -hmm. This is also mm -hmm. this will be, means I'm getting the mm -hmm. second equation sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. I got this form. Similarly. Let me divide each term by cos square theta. Now, sine square theta by cos. Oh, it's not visible or what? Okay. Oh yes, right. Oh, let me explain here. Sine square theta plus cos square theta. I had divided by sine square theta always, so I got one plus cot square theta is equal to cos square theta. Okay. Divide each term by cos square theta. So sine square theta by cos square theta. Sine square theta by cos square theta will be sine theta by cos theta whole square, which is tan theta whole square, right? Yeah. That would be tan square tan square theta. Mm hmm. Then cos square theta by cos square theta is one, obviously. Mm hmm. And one divided by cos square theta is one by cos theta whole square. One by cos theta is sec theta, and sec theta whole square is sec square theta. Mm hmm. We are forty equations star them, literally star them in front. Mm -hmm. 
they are very important. Okay. Hi everyone, Shriyansh, Shriyansh, Chalikya. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then let us go on with something which we always end the class with. Anyone wants to guess? I'm guessing it's a quiz. Sending the link in the chat box. Just a minute. Take Join quickly, quickly. Keep that table handy. Trigonometric table handy. And uh, when there are a few type the answer questions. Uh, if they are not a natural number or a whole number, then write in decimal only. I'm making it sure that it's not something like 1 by 3 for which you'll die writing 0 0.3333333333 up to it and I'm not going to do that. Okay? Yeah. Okay. 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 Quick start quizzes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what's coming. Okay, everyone has joined. I think Shriyansh is there, Rinka is there, Rinansh is there. Prajwal, Prajwal, join. Join quick. I'm sending the link just once more. Can you unmute? Is there any problem? Because if it's not, uh, if you're not able to join, I have to start. Uh, I joined, I joined. Oh, are you? Yeah, now you're signed. Pierre Pant. That's you, right? Pierre Pantali. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't change my name. Ah, sure. All the best. Ajinkya, you are logged in from... Bye bye, you must be to press F5. Okay.
Rajwal, is there any problem? Like uh, your score is not increasing. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, Ryansh. Sir, my net like got disconnected when when I was giving the quiz, so I made a new account and gave it from it. You you already made a new account, right? Yeah, sir. Okay, so yeah, fine. Oh, even in the second one, it got over. So you need a third one. What? No, no, sir. Only in the first one, the net got disconnected. Fine, fine, it's fine. My new account name is Ranch Cabra. Yeah, okay. Yeah.
Seems everyone is done with the quiz. Should I stop it now? Yes. Hey, let's stop the quiz and I'll discuss one question which would have been which would be the toughest. It would give me the answer which was the toughest. And we're discussing that. Third is Riyansh Kabra, second is Riyansh, and first is Adin Kya. Let us see the accuracy with which everyone has done. Ajin Kya got 71% accuracy, Shreyansh with 78%. Well, last time, as I can remember, their accuracies were the same, and with speed, did Ajin Kya win. This time, Shreyansh was more, but speed did uh, speed losing his points. So, based on accuracy, Shreyansh has won, but since quizzes are something which uses both speed and uh, accuracy, it's Ajin Kya was won the quiz. Congratulations to Ajinkya and now let us discuss the Achha, toughest, toughest question. Hmm. Okay, this one was, this one had 39 degree into it. So, and uh, I suppose you want privy to that. So basically you could have uh, at least cut two answers because See, there was this triangle question where the angle of elevation is 39 degrees and the length with which he is viewing it that is 30 meters. So obviously that means the hypotenuse is 30 meters according to the problem. And 47 is obviously not possible for uh, the base of the perpendicular. 27.5, well, um, as in it's 39 degrees. So... You can kind of guesstimate that it obviously cannot be 27.5. 18.9, 19.5 it could have been. So this was a catch in this question. Let me see what the longest question was. Find side AB. This was easy. This um, you could have taken... Okay, sine 60 you know is... Uh, sine 60 is root 3 by 2. And that is uh, sine, uh, that is perpendicular by hypotenuse. That would mean AB by 10 is equal to root 3 by 2. So it's 5 root 3, that is approximately 8.66 meter. And uh, I'm curious to know about one question which appeared in IIT JE. And let me see how is your accuracy on that question. Let's begin. Ah, here's a question. A person standing, oh wow, only one person incorrect on this question. This is amazing. Okay, truthfully tell me, did anyone cheat in this quiz? Okay, that was, uh, yeah, should have trusted you, but... Okay, fine. I believe you. So, okay, good. Everyone, any doubts regarding trigonometry today? Anyone? I think your hand is raised. Nothing. Okay, good. So, I'll send the worksheet in a few hours. Please practice it. And uh, please get well versed with the table. The table is very important. It should literally be instilled in your memory. See, you basically just need to remember sine and cos. And in fact, if you see a pattern, right? Let me let me come back to the board. Not be on the computer. Sitting is harmful to the body. A research shows. So, uh. I am not taking 37 and 53 over here. Let me take only 30, 30, 45, 60 and 90. 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. So I am writing this is for sine and this is for cos. So it would be 0, uh, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2 and then 1. And then the table entirely also there was 1, root 3 by 2, 1 by root 2 and 1 by 2. So you can in a way see that it's like backwards, right? This is from zero, like 
one is here and one is here means a uh, half raised sin 90 minus theta is cos theta right so it should be 0 30 45 60 90 this is sin 60 this is cos 30 so you can see this pattern you have just have to remember this part then reverse that part the other you will get by dividing and find the reciprocal sign everyone yes okay. okay so let us keep to this for today thank you very much for attending and hope to see you tomorrow and in the other session as well thank you bye 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 shaktam bye sir thank you sir bye thank you